Hey everybody, Dr. O here. Welcome back to the Finding Your Fat Loss Sweet Spot series. Real quick update on Oliver. Thank you so much for the well wishes and the prayers and the, and the positive thoughts. Uh, he's doing great. His his brain MRI uh, was perfect and he is getting a little better every day. So he was even able to go jump on the trampoline for a little bit without getting a headache. So that was a huge step for us. All right, so let, we're back to our Fat Loss Sweet Spot series. We're still talking about eating enough protein. So in the last video, we covered why it's important to optimize your protein intake and consume a moderate to high amount of protein. In this video, we will cover how. There will be some math, so I'm gonna share examples to make it easier for you to run the numbers for yourself as we move in. All right, before we get started with setting our protein targets though, I want to assume, I'm assuming a couple things here. Number one, you are in a calorie deficit because you're trying to lose fat. This is the fat loss sweet spot series. Number two, you are hopefully physically active and strength training if you've been watching my videos. And number three, I'm also assuming that you're healthy, right? Work with your doctor if you have any condition that could impact your protein needs, one direction or the other. Okay, so protein is our top priority. So how do we set our protein targets? There's a couple ways to do that and I'll share both of them with you. So here we see a good general starting point is that you should get 20 to 35% of your calories from protein. So you take your total number of calories, how much food you're eating in a day, number of calories, times the protein percent. So take it times 20% if you wanna be on the lower end, take it times 35% if you wanna be on the higher end. That's gonna tell you how many calories of protein you should eat. But each gram of protein has four calories. So take the number of protein calories you're eating and divide that by four to get the number of grams of protein you should eat in a day. So if you run the numbers, let me give you some ranges here. Your protein range then would be 75 to 131 grams of protein per day if you're eating 1500 calories. It would be between 100 and 175 grams per day if you're eating 2000 calories. And it would be between 125 and 219 grams per day if you're eating 2500 calories, which is uh, very close to where I'm at. So this is a very solid place to start, but there is a better way to determine your protein needs. So let's look at protein intake based on your body weight, or more specifically, your goal weight. All right, but before we do, before we talk about the protein range, looking at goal weight, we have to talk, we have to start by talking about what not to do, and that is not to use the RDA, in my opinion. So the RDA for sedentary adults is 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight, which would be 0.36 grams per pound. This would be about 80 grams of protein for me, and it would be about 54 grams of protein for someone who weighs 150 pounds. So if you think that's enough protein, especially in a calorie deficit, go back and rewatch the last video because it is not. I looked at studies that were directly comparing 0.8 grams per kilogram to higher numbers, and the higher numbers won in every study. So where did it come from? Why do we have this number? The first RDAs for protein were set in 1941 by the U.S. National Research Council. They did so at the request of the National De Defense Advisory Commission. So why? They were developed to help food relief efforts to deal with starvation and malnutrition caused by war and crippling economic depression, right? Does this sound like goals for optimal health to you? Absolutely not. So what does the science say about optimal protein intake for fat loss and preserving lean mass? And it is not 0.8 grams per kilogram per day. So here's the numbers. 99% of all protein experts are gonna be right within this range. So this is a very good range. It is between 1.6 and 2.2 grams per kilogram of goal weight per day. That would be 0.73 to one gram per pound of goal weight. So this protein intake is usually talked about in grams per kilogram of goal weight, and that's very important. There's no reason to aim for 300 to 400 grams of protein per day if you have a lot of weight to lose like I did, right? If you use your, your current body weight, you're also factoring in the 50 or 75 or 100 pounds of fat you're carrying around. We really need to only feed our lean mass protein. So if you think about your goal weight, um, that's gonna put you in a much better place. I mean, you could specifically look at um, using protein uh, kilograms per kilogram of lean body mass if you know what your lean body mass is based on DEXA scans or, or other tests. So let's just, we'll start with, we'll, we'll focus on goal weight though. So you take your goal weight in pounds and divide it by 2.2 to get your goal weight in kilograms for those of you that use pounds like I do. I've also made the conversions for you right here on the screen in a few places so you can just look at those. So 1.6 grams per kilogram is 0.73 grams per pound. 
1.8 grams per kilogram is 0.82 grams per pound, and then 2.2 grams per kilogram is one gram per pound, nice and easy. That's actually why a lot of times you do hear this. You hear to aim for one gram per pound of goal weight. It's a nice and easy target, easy to remember, easy for most people to implement, but you don't really need to go that high. So what I like to say is I always say to aim for one gram per pound of goal weight because you're fine if you just get close. So if you aim for 2.2 grams per kilogram or one gram per pound of your goal weight, and you end up getting 1.8 grams per kilogram, which is that 0.82 grams per pound, you're probably just fine according to the majority of the studies, right? So most studies show that the being in the 1.6 to 1.8 range will, will get you where you need to be. So if you shoot high and you, and you end up falling a little bit short, you're probably right in the sweet spot anyways. So I tell people to aim high though, because a lot of people eat way too little protein and have a hard time getting enough I have my students do diet analysis projects, so I see tons of people's protein intake, and I am shocked at how many aren't even meeting the RDA, which we now know is less than half of what is optimal for preserving lean mass. So I would rather have most people aim a little too high than too low. All right, so let's look at some examples. If you weigh 150 pounds, that would be 68 kilograms. So this would give you a protein range of between 110 and 150 grams of protein per day. If your goal weight is 180 pounds, which would be 82 kilograms, this would give you a protein range of between 131 and 180 grams per day. So obviously scale that up or down if your goal weight is higher or lower than that. So now it's your turn. If you're measuring in pounds, so you determine your goal weight in pounds. Take that goal weight times 0 0.73, write it down. Take that goal weight times one, that should be an easy one, write it down. You now know your protein range. Your protein range is between blank and blank grams per day. That's in pounds. If you're doing it in kilograms, you determine your goal weight in kilograms. Take that goal weight times 1.6, write it down. Take that goal weight times 2.2, write it down. And now you know your protein range is between blank and blank grams per day. Please reach out, I'll gladly help you with the math. Whether you're using percentages or using these numbers, just let me know um, what your goal weight is, how many calories you eat, and I'll help you run the numbers. It would be my pleasure. Let me get a drink here quick. So now we have this range, right? We have the range that will be beneficial for the huge majority of people. Some studies say going a little above this is beneficial. Some say you can go a little below, but this is the target range for almost every human who's physically active, exercising, and on a diet. And that's who I'm talking to here. So like I said, most people though would end up being just fine here in the middle, which is 1.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. That's, that's great for most people. Who should aim higher than that? Who should make sure they're getting really close to that one gram per pound number? Um, you should aim for the higher end if you're in a steep calorie deficit, right? If, you, if, you're, if you're cutting your calories quite a bit and you're losing fat aggressively, you have to be extra protective of your lean mass. Number two, if you're highly active, right? You gotta fuel your muscles and repair your muscles. The more you're using them, the more protein you need. Same thing, if you're lifting weights, then you're definitely gonna wanna be on the higher end. You're not even trying to maintain muscle. You're trying to build it. You're trying to add new muscle. Then the last uh, person that I would say, and you could be a combination of these, of course, the last person I would say would definitely wanna aim for the higher end is people that are older, right? I'm 45, as you get to 45, 50 and beyond, you develop something called anabolic resistance. And that basically means that you need more protein per meal to stimulate the same amount of muscle protein synthesis that somebody younger would. So you wanna err you want to err on the side of caution and consume a little extra protein as you get older. But more is not always better, right? So who's gonna be fine on the lower end of this range? The lower end of the range will be fine for people who are sedentary, right? It's still double the RDA and I think it's good. You don't need as much protein if you have less muscle to begin with or less muscle to maintain. And you also don't need as much protein if your muscles don't need to be repaired as often because you're not using them as much. So aim for 2.2 if you're very physically active and trying to build muscle. Most people good in the middle. You can aim for the lower end if you're sedentary. But hopefully if you're trying to lose fat, you're not super sedentary because of the what I've taught you in this video series. All right, but who'd want less than this? So now you see on the screen, I've added 1.5 grams per kilogram, which is 0.68 grams per pound. 
and 1.2 grams per kilogram, which is 0.55 grams per pound. So there are very few people that I would recommend this for, but there is a use case for it. You may want to aim for the lower end of this range, 1.6, or even slightly below if you're on a ketogenic diet and you're trying to maximize ketone production. Now you have to decide if you want to maximize lean mass preservation or maximize ketone production, and that can be confusing because ketones are muscle sparing, so it really is hard to decide which direction to go. But some people like me can stay in ketosis with higher protein diets, right? I had 220 grams of protein yesterday in four meals. And my ketones, when I woke up this morning uh, using my precision extra meter, which is the one that I use for blood, and then I use the Biosense for my breath acetone or breath ketone meters, my ketone levels were 1.8 millimolar this morning. That's with 220 grams of protein. That much protein would kick some people out of ketosis, but it does not kick me out of ketosis. So some, but some, so some people do need to dip lower, maybe into the, uh, maybe maybe start with 1.5. And you, if you're still not getting good ketones, maybe you do have to drip, dip a little bit lower if you want to see that big bump in ketones. So speaking of that, I'm going to do a separate video soon about tracking your ketone levels to determine what's called your personal protein sweet spot for those of you that are keto like I am, right? So you'll, 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 the goal is to find what is the absolute most protein you can eat and still be in ketosis at the level that you want because you don't want to go lower than that, but you may not want to go higher than that either. So I'll do a separate video where I show you how to do that. I actually have an entire course coming out next year on low carb and keto diets. So please, while we're on this topic, let me know if you have any questions or any topics that you want to make sure are covered in these videos and in that course. So now we know how much protein we need. When should we eat it? Right? Meal timing is obviously a huge deal because you know many of you are intermittent fasting and things like that. The weight of the evidence says that spreading your protein out evenly over three or more meals in an eight hour or longer eating window is ideal for muscle protein synthesis and muscle growth. Now notice I said ideal, this does not mean required. So let's look at some of the science here. I'm gonna cover these pretty quickly because I already covered them in, in a video and I'll show you that one later. Uh, but let's look at the science here. Myofibrillar muscle protein synthesis rates subsequent to a meal in response to increasing doses of whey protein at rest and after resistance exercise. So first of all, whey protein, you can probably get by with less protein. So, so when you look at these whey protein studies, I basically like to bump it up a little bit more if we're looking at other protein sources. But the results of this study showed that myofibrillar muscle protein synthesis increased by 49% with 20 grams of whey protein and jumped up to 56% with 40 grams of whey protein. So increasing your protein intake, intake at that meal from 20 to 40 grams resulted in an extra 10 to 20% higher muscle protein synthesis. So I do think 20 grams per meal is too low. And if you ask me to pick a single number, I would say 40 grams of protein per meal would be optimal for many, many people. People, most people. Next study, dietary protein distribution positively influences 24-hour muscle protein synthesis in healthy adults. So they looked at two groups. The diets had the same amount of protein and the same number of calories. The difference was one group had the protein evenly spread out between three meals and one protein, one group ate three meals, but they had very little protein in meal one and meal two, and then ate the huge majority of their protein at dinner. The 24-hour muscle protein synthesis rates were 25% higher in the group that spread their protein out across three meals rather than eating most of their protein at dinner. So that's why I think you should evenly spread your protein throughout the day as long as you're reaching that minimal amount per meal. I'll give examples in a second. Last study, moderating the portion size of a protein-rich meal improves anabolic efficiency in the young and the elderly. This study showed that there is a limit to how much protein your body can use to increase muscle protein synthesis from one meal. This group, they looked at two, two groups. One group ate 30 grams of, of lean beef in a meal. The other group ate 90 grams of lean beef in a meal. And the key thing here is, um, so they weren't matched for calories because obviously one group was getting way more protein and way more calories because they were eating three times as much food. 30 grams of protein from that lean beef increased muscle protein synthesis by about 50%. But tripling that, so despite, despite a threefold increase in protein and calories, there was no further increase in protein synthesis following ingestion of 90 grams of protein. So eating 30 grams of protein at one time was the same as 90 grams of protein at one time if you're only looking at one thing, muscle protein synthesis. So I want to also note something though, you can absorb this much protein. You can absorb way more than 30 grams of protein in a meal. 
That's not the issue. And, you, and your gut cells can use it and all sorts of things. But you can't force more muscle protein synthesis by eating more protein once you hit your ceiling. If not, I'd eat 400 grams of protein per meal and I would look like the Incredible Hulk. But you can't. You, there is a limit. So now we know what. Well, before, before I get into the details, I just want you to know that I did cover these three studies in more detail in this video here if you want to go find that one. So what's my general advice based on what we've looked at here? We know we need a minimum amount of protein per meal if we want to stimulate muscle protein synthesis. So I definitely wouldn't recommend less than 20 grams and I feel like 20 isn't optimal. So I generally recommend between 30 and 60 grams of protein per meal, depending on your age, your size, the quality of your protein sources and the number of meals you eat in a day. So, but if I, but I already told you, if I had to pick one number, I would say that 40 is optimal for most people. It appears to be where you maximize muscle protein synthesis without just eating a bunch of extra protein that's being turned into fuel. So how does this look? So 30 to 60 grams of protein, it, how, how that looks depends on your total, like how much protein you're going to eat in a day. So let's look at some examples. Let's, I'll start with myself. So I aim for around 200 grams of protein per day. Um, some days it's, you know, 185, 190. Some days like yesterday, it gets up to 220. So just that's, that's kind of the range that I'm in. But I aim for 200 grams of protein. So 50 grams of protein four times per day makes the most sense for me. Right? I don't want to have to eat more than four times per day. And I'm talking about on my eating days, obviously, because there are, fast, there are days that I'm fasting. But um, I don't want to have to eat more than four meals. So if I spread it out into five or six meals, it's just, it's too much. I don't want to deal with that. But on the flip side, I also wouldn't get as much benefit if I was eating 70 grams of protein three times per day, right? That much protein would kick me out of ketosis. 50 or 60 grams at a time does not, but 70 grams of protein in a meal kicks me out of ketosis and I'll just end up burning more of that for protein for fuel anyways. So for me, 50 grams of protein four times a day is the best way to get to 200 grams. But let's say that your goal is 160 grams. Well, you do 40 grams of protein four times per, per day would work really good too. But the key is to definitely never go below 20 grams of protein in a meal and probably should never go below 30 grams of protein in one meal. What about someone who's aiming for a lower target? So let's say your, your goal is 100 grams of protein per day. For that person, I'd recommend really two options, either eating 30 to 35 grams of protein three times per day, because you're probably stimulating muscle protein synthesis as much as you can, or 50 grams of protein twice per day, because that makes sure you get, you get to that 40 gram level, which I really like. That's the sweet spot for me. I think both would be way better than eating four or five meals per day, right? If you're eating 20 grams of protein at a time, five times a day, you're probably never reaching that threshold where you're fully stimulating muscle protein synthesis. So in this situation, fewer meals would be better because you're only aiming for 100 grams of protein. So in the end though, you have to kind of play around with this. You have to play with different approaches until you figure out what works best for you. If you're eating OMAD or TUMAD, well, you know the answer. Maximize your protein intake in those one or two meals. If you're, if you're fine with trying different things, then play with three meals, play with four meals and, and see how it goes. So one more important point about protein intake. Which meals should have the most protein? If you're eating three or four meals per day, let's say. Ideally, the answer is all meals, right? All meals should reach this muscle protein synthesis threshold. But definitely make sure your first and your last meals of the day are full of protein, since there's probably gonna be a 12 hour or longer period between them where you aren't getting any protein. So the last meal of the day should have a lot of protein because you're gonna go a long time without it. The first meal should have a lot of protein because you went a long time without it, right? You're breaking your fast, whether that's at breakfast or not. So first and last meal of the day appear to be ideal, but you're probably better off evenly spreading your protein throughout the day. All right, now we gotta talk about safety, then we'll be done. So are high protein diets safe, right? We have, let's, let's end by talking about that. There are a lot of concerns about high protein diets. You hear it all the time, uh, being dangerous, right? Most of the talk is about bone health and kidney health. So let's see what the science has to say. Really, really good review here. Clinical evidence and mechanisms of high protein diet induced weight loss. So I'm gonna read quotes directly from here. First one, a meta-analysis of 74 randomized controlled trials observed that subjects in the high protein group, high protein diet group, which were between 16 and 45% of total daily energy to intake as protein, were not significantly different from the low protein diet subjects who were consuming 5 to 
of total daily energy intake as protein with regard to bone mineral density of the lumbar spine and hips. So high protein groups, low protein groups, no difference when it came to bone de density, no significant differences whatsoever. So bones appear to be good, which totally makes sense. I mean, think about bone is just mineralized protein. Second quote, because the kidney discussion is the biggest concern for most people. There have also been concerns that high protein diets may deteriorate renal function by increasing the glomerular filtration rate or GFR and inducing renal hypertrophy. However, Friedman et al. found no declining renal function in terms of various indicators such as glomerular filtration rate and albuminuria, which would be albumin or protein in your urine, when studying the safety of high protein diets in 307 obese adults with normal renal function over two years. So those are both those are both quotes from this review that have looked at all the literature that are not, that are finding no evidence of, of bone issues or kidney issues on high protein diets. Another one though, because the kidney issue comes up more, more often. Here's a quote from the World Health Organization's official report on protein: the most widely quoted potential problems of a high protein diet relate to renal or kidney function and damage. But as discussed above in their report. The evidence for such claims in otherwise healthy individuals does not stand up to scrutiny. So high protein diets are safe for the huge majority of people. So finding our fat loss sweet spot. Now we finished up with number number four. We, we learned why we need to get protein and now we know how much to get to make sure you're eating enough protein to maximize fat loss while preserving or even building lean mass. But as always, work with your doctor if you have any medical issue that could impact how much protein you should eat, renal failure, etc. So I hope I've made the case that protein intake is a major way to protect your lean mass while losing fat. But if we go back in part four of this series, which is number three up here, we talked about how exercise protected your muscles. In the next video, so number five, we're gonna look at how poor sleep and stress do the opposite, which is why I call them anti-exercise. So I'll explain what I mean next time. I hope this video helped. Like I said, reach out if you need any help with the math. I get it, can be, it can be confusing, but I do hope this video helped. You have a wonderful day. Be blessed.